I'll talk first. Hey, everybody. It's Seven Hashi. <laughs> hey, Welcome everybody. Welcome back to VFX and Chill, the show where we do things with VFX and do things with chill. Uh, speaking of chill, Hashi, what do you want to do this week? For, how are you, actually? Let's ask that first. Oh, I'm well, Seth. Um, we are uh, ha- we are an exciting stage in life because uh, I am moving very oh, soon. Oh, we can so say that publicly. All right, right now we I'm have uh, yeah. I am moving to this address. <laughs> I'll post it right here in the. Uh, um, no, but uh, yeah, we're doing a big move. So we have in-laws in town, people running around doing all that fun stuff, and uh, 400 billion pieces of paperwork that are flying back and forth right now. But um, So I'm very focused, very <laughs> present, uh, as always. But um, yeah, how are you doing? Well, so? you know, I'm moving and I'm trying to finish a short that I started three years ago with a team of people that I'm responsible for all at the same time. Sorry, that's you. That's you right now having to do all of those things. Um. Uh, Man. Uh, sorry. I, but uh, yes. Uh, oh, I switched over to AirPods. Sorry. I can you talk real quick so I know I can hear you. Thank hey, God. what's up? I could have just. I should have just pretended to be silent. <laughs> That's more like you. Coming. You're early off your game, man. And also, just to check in, uh, is our is our guy in the sky, uh, Michael? There. How are you? Maybe doing, I'll Michael? maybe I'll show him this week. Oh, I'm. I'm I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be seen this week. I, I dressed up last week in an amazing costume and no one saw it. <laughs> oh. But now I, I, I see you're sporting the very awesome uh, Action yeah. BFX shirt. I love that that logo, by the way. It's so it's just so so simple and so... Yeah, it's pretty perfect. great. It always reminds me of the Cowabunga. It's, it's great because if, if your stunt team is wearing it and they get exploded and they land upside down, the logo reads Oh, that's true. Way. If you're blown into that's many true. pieces, you're, no matter how your torso it's a, it's an, ends up. Yeah. Is that called an ambigram? Is ambigram? Is that when it's visually can be in, or an inversion? That's a great question for Michael in the show. Wait. No, inversions. Yeah. There, look up the book Inversions by Kim Scott. You know, there we go. Uh, anyway, fun tangent. Question asked, um, Ben answered. Yeah. Hey, uh, what are we doing this week? The chat is really hoping that we do another two-hour-long interview and don't show any After Effects. Just kidding. Yeah, oh, were they upset that we didn't show any After Effects last week? Instead, we just showed them Quake being played on Oscilloscope. Does that not enough for you? I want to do an entire episode about that freaking Quake on an Oscilloscope that they that perce- this perception guy showed us. That was unreal. I know they just they screen, now. like they should have a screen like yeah they found a way to take a 3D rent like live 3D render thing sh- shot into an oscilloscope it, translating the 3D yeah. into waveforms like audio that could be translated into like and they just blew oh, past the that Oh the video like, they yeah. showed us the rep that they showed us was blew past that it was like uh trans <laughs> it was like translated to sound waves like hold on hold on hang on why is that one frame Yes, go back yes. a few seconds. Oh man, it was the coolest thing ever. We're actually definitely going to try a whole episode where I just where you just attempt to do that. Uh, this week, though, Hashi, we, we joked that it would be fun to so, it, it would be funny to just like do our work on this show, like use this show as a time to like get our actual work done. Uh, and now we're kind of doing absolutely. that. And try to totally pass it <laughs> off as a show. Yeah. So, um, so as some of you know, if you're uh, a, a weekly viewer, um, Red Giant was really awesome and helped me film this Venom short um, that um, was bandied about, like between Aaron Robinowitz and me and Seth. Until we came up with this idea, hey, it would be really fun to film something with David Hewlett from Stargate SG-1 and a a wonderful actor from a handful of great like sci-fi and such as Hewlett. Cause of the pandemic in uh yes, Hewlett, of course, or the other the other great uh, sci-fi epic is yeah. another amazing role. So, yeah, we all wanted to do something together, and we stumbled upon, hey, there's a Venom movie coming out, and we should film a little parody of that. And we thought, well, it would be really funny if instead of a serious action movie body invasion thing, it was more like 
hey, roommates having to deal with this situation. And that was the, does that premise turned into a script and they flew out, we filmed it with a whole crew and everything. And that was almost to like to the week, like three oh, yeah. years ago. We, we filmed it, we got a rough edit together and then had no post-production pipeline in place or paid for or organized and a bunch of other stuff to do at the time. So that uh, instead of getting the short out before Venom came out, it was going to come out uh, sometime after. Or maybe we'll time it with the Blu-ray release. And then that passed. And then we thought, ah, oh, shoot, we've missed the boat on this. And then we heard that Venom 2 was coming out. And so we thought, oh, that's easy. That'll be in the future in about a year. We could probably work on the short in the meantime. And yet again, uh well, um, my my persistence. You, well, you did skip a few <laughs> steps also, which were like at that point, oh, another one's coming out. Well, we'll get it done by then. And then the pandemic delayed the film. And then we're like, well, we'll get it done by then. And then the pandemic delayed the film again. We were given many chances to finish this film. <laughs> so many chances. We, we could have had it done on time so many times. And so yet, many times. Here we are, Hashi. So... What we decided we would do is just dive into it very honestly that we have a short that is very overdue and not even and, timely And actually, anymore. the sequel is, is already done. Like, the sequel has pretty much made the short. And the sequel has absolutely made the short. Uh, so our joke was to present the casual interactions of Venom as a terrible roommate. And if any of you saw the teaser for Venom 2, it opens with a montage remarkably similar in tone and jokes to uh, what we wanted to do. So a lot of the uh, a lot of our jokes are going to be uh, in releasing this three years late uh, will will not seem so cool and will not will not be as funny to have. Uh, like, hey, look, you what know, a novel take on Venom. And look, they ended up doing it in the real movie, here's too. Here's the thing. It's so, actually, uh, I think it's going to be pretty weird, funny. And there's thing. also, there's a, some really, really cool effects happening in this. Can you talk about some of the stuff that, like, well, I, I'll give a little context. We, <laughs> since since shooting this, we merged with Maxon. <laughs> I just realized we shot this before we were Maxon. Um, yes. And, uh. We shot this before we had the ability to work with actual yes. 3D software. Yes, and we have, uh, we now have like, Hashi has like the, the help and assistance of the entire uh, Maxon training team, which is full of like, like super geniuses who are incredibly talented and skilled and some of the sweetest people in the world, and so, uh, you've been seeing some really cool tests coming in just this past week, right? Imagine, yeah, you have a short that you're, you've embarrassingly not worked on for a very long time, and it's this, it's this amazing effort of a bunch of people who worked really hard to get that short filmed and into footage form, um, and now suddenly we realized, hey, we are, after things had moved around and we had merged, and uh, Suddenly, we have access to all of these experts in a software that I was not especially good at and still continue to be. Uh, I'll say I'm learning. It's more than um, me. I'm not but, even learning uh, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly, we have um, the entire Maxon training team uh, in a way like a volunteer army is trying to grab pieces of this short when they can in between all of the other amazing training that they are doing both on their channel and one-on-one -on -one in person training that they are doing are making amazing things for us. And what's fun is that we're getting to explore a bunch of venom related effects, including tendrils and tentacles and venom transformations. The three T's. And the one that I am the, yeah, the, the one that I'm the most jazzed about was I didn't know that Venom would appear as a like head on a snake Venom in uh, in the movie. And we thought it was a really it was a really cool effect and didn't know about it when we were filming. And then I thought, oh, man, that would be really cool because Venom has a lot of dialogue in this. But we assumed 
from the trailers that were out at the time when we wrote the short that it was internal monologue. So it was just like you could hear Venom talking in his head and he would talk back to it. But now, um, if any of you are familiar with Nose Man, Athanasios Pazensis, is um, we decided to... to, Yeah, you did. uh, I did not know that he would dedicate the last like four hundred hours of his life Maybe I don't know. It, it's it's very confusing because it's either uh, it was either so much work or he's that brilliant. Both are and both. Yeah, both work for me. <laughs> and I believe it's playing with audio here. Is there audio? I'll turn it up. Space. Let me start it back over. Sorry about that. Oh, be cool, man. I really need a place to crash right now when you've got so much space. Oh, be cool, man. I really need a place to crash right now when you've got so much space. Phone's for you. Oh, so what are we watching here? Be cool, here? man. I really need a place to crash right now. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I don't think anyone's home to answer that phone, so you can uh, It's the studio that calling. The That's my other podcast. But <laughs> please listen <laughs> nope. to the I promised I'd stop hyping my shows show. on my other shows. Go ahead. Sorry. So what is this? Um, so what we are looking at, um, and let me see, Seth, are you able to? Uh, uh, yeah, I can. I can show both our screens and I'm going to do it like this. Amazing. Amazing. So, so what, what I keep, I keep, I, 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 I love, I love to, say to say we, even though even this was, was all, this was 100%, 100% nose man, nose man. Nose man. took, took, um, um, I used, I used an, an app, app called the called Face, Face Cap, Cap app, app, which, which allowed, allowed me to record, me to record myself, myself saying, saying this, this dialogue. dialogue. So, so once, I, once had, I had, it was, it was translated, translated into, into this, this FBX, FBX file, file of, of my, my face, face performing, performing each of these, of these lines. lines. And, and we had, we that, had that as data, data but I had, I had nothing, nothing to do, do with, it. with it. And so, and so uh, oh, am I, uh, Am I, share, am I sharing is my, is my audio, audio echoing, echoing Seth, Seth anywhere? anywhere? Am I, am I, am I be doubled, be doubled up? Um, oh, yeah. Sorry about that. We're back. Sorry. Excellent. So anyway, um, without realizing that we actually have a software called Moves My Maxon that, uh, that, does, and, uh, that does this kind of a thing, uh, I have used this other app called the FaceCap app, which does something similar um, and actually worked out really well for these purposes because what it did was it recorded my face just in terms of um, uh, pose morphs. I, I'm going to get all the terminology incorrect here. <laughs> but um, instead of the like the relative translations of parts of the face, which look a little bit weird when you map them to a character that is you know cartoony or has a mouth that goes all the way up the side of his head uh we were able to take the pose morph data and through this incredible node uh expresso node system uh map let's see oh i forgot about sharing my whole screen so you can even see the redshift preview of it over here um but uh whoops i'm trying to uh make it visible in some way so you can see the uh well, face to face thing. So let me. Uh, I'm working in a in a half uh, half screen. Oh, I can try to get you full screen. Oh. Hang on a second. Uh, Oops, that's me. I just...
All good. Excellent. So, listen, Seth is still learning how to use a computer. So, hey, we are not good. We never claim to be good with technology. All right. Amazing. So, yeah. So the the fun of this was. Uh, let's see. Are we still? Oh, we're we're back. Uh, I I'm getting mixed mixed signals from the uh, chat, which is also delayed. So it's the fun. Uh, um. Okay, yeah, we're good now. Yeah, we don't we don't get to hear the audio output of the show while we're doing yeah, it, it because it would be confusing. confusing. And, and so, so uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, a little bit bizarre. Little bit bizarre. So, so I, we're going to say you're doubled up again, but I'm turning it down. I fixed it, guys. Don't put it in the comments. All right. I'm trying to get your full screen on here. It uh, Okay. you keep, No one cares. They care about your thing. Keep going, and I'm going to get you purely visible. Just a second. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to close. I'm going to reopen my uh, uh, this cinema project because I think I've made some changes that are messing things up. I love the splash screen, by the way, right now. Oh, yeah, it's really it's cool. by, the uh, screen, who's by? Ignoring the fact that, that it's animated, which is cool in and of itself, but it, the image has little things in it about the new features, like the fact that there's better spline work, the fact that it has better input for data to have data-driven animations, the fact it's got capsules, like all of that's included in the splash screen, which I think is neat. So but, you know, cool. it animates, and they didn't tell us. So the first time I launched it, it did that. I was like, whoa! <laughs> So as you can see, this this very much reminds me of whenever you uh, hear, you know, on a, in a visual effects behind the scenes, they took Andy Serkis's face and literally translated it right to the thing, or it's digital makeup. There was no intervention. It's 100% that performance. Uh, it's, that's almost never the case. There's always some artistic intervention. And um, what Nozman took on with this project was figuring out how to make my human poses work out with he i provided him with this venom 3d model and he because of the way the geometry loops were arranged he decided to entirely rebuild the head so the loops were optimized for this new venom model so i just i the amount of work that happened within honestly like two days he just said, can you record yourself doing this and send it to me? And I did. And I don't I don't know how, but he came back with this, this Venom head that he had built custom for this and uh, figured out how to translate my expressions into Venomous expressions. And look at the look at the, the drool. The, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. And, uh, let me I let me open up my uh, the drool is the best. The, the, it that's always my is. But from the real Venom trailer, it's my favorite part. Yeah, we talked about mm -hmm. it uh, a few weeks ago. That like that slime that you that like they add to those comps is like is what sells those comps, hundred percent. Mm hmm. So let me see if I can get uh, Redshift to pop open here. I'm I'm new to Redshift. Did I press the right thing for s streaming it? The chat is asking if the X rotation is inverted on the Venom head, and it appears to be the case. Yes, it is. When I wrote, when I um recorded these i assumed that the software for my benefit was reflecting it like a selfie cam was and so i looked the same direction that the head is supposed to be looking in the short um but uh then when the data came in i realized that it was a uh um yeah switched so oh yeah uh we have Athanasios in the chat uh, giving some good information on how this all works. Oh yeah. Hit him with all your questions. He'll give you like yes. very thorough. Oh, answers. there's the, there's the uh, live preview. I just hadn't moved my camera, so it wasn't refreshing, but uh, it's fun excitement. So yeah, I, it, so it looks like uh, he says that the face is mainly a displacement in Redshift, And he also used the Redshift tag tessellation instead of a subdivision surface object. But that means the extra subdivision to give the extra details to the displacement happens at render time instead of in the viewport while you're working. 
which is wonderful because you can all see that th this is you know generally low poly going into here um let me see if i can uh i have not explored the uh everything is very well so let me see if i can show it uh maybe i'll just do uh here we go so yeah a very simple model going into this which i'm sure really benefits playback but the output is wonderful and uh when we were first talking about perhaps getting venom's head into the short um, I'm going to, let me see if I can pull up our edits uh, of something that I did, which is very, very goofy. Um, bah, 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 bah. Where did I save that edit? This is so exciting. <laughs> um, but honestly, not thinking we were going to have Venom's face in this short at all, except for maybe for one shot. Uh, suddenly, he will get to be this presence throughout. So and cool. I am just, it, it's so great. And it's so wonderful that the movie had a device for this of having, you know, his head on this viney stalk um, to kind of talk to him. So we could have these uh, back and someday forth. Someday we should get people. Someday we should show people how you were originally going to attempt the venom head uh, shot. Oh my goodness! So yeah, it was quite an interesting. You don't have you know to talk what? about. I wonder it. if Just, I could. If you want to show it, I've got it, and I can, I can, I can share it. I just didn't know if you wanted oh, to share it. Oh, do you have it? Uh, you yes, texted it I would to love me. I to share this. Can I? Sh can I show them yes, the thing you texted? Share that video. Okay. Let me. All right. Me I think there's it. audio with it so, of me describing. So this is uh, this is how we uh, blocked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Hang on. Uh, so, <laughs> one of the other things you sent me recently it keeps popping up whenever I go to <laughs> find this video. Oh man. I think. I yeah, know you do know exactly about. what thing I'm talking about. <laughs> Hashi, while Seth finds that piece, the chat has requested that we do a Halloween episode or two this month. I'm thinking we could do some cool stuff with bats flocking with particular, some other like kind of spooky stuff, just to be like, here's how to make a little spooky video. It would be kind of a neat episode if we have, you know, time I'm during the rest of this month. Spooky little video. Ooh. I love it. Let's get spooky. It's Starting spooky today with yeah, creepy venom faces. <laughs> all right uh stand by got got a clip right, coming soon that. coming soon coming soon let's put it in the clip four module and it's going to be here Your sentences are constructed as if there's a three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I know. I keep I'm not <laughs> pausing for, the, for dramatic effect. <laughs> it's my fault entirely. Um, all right. Uh, clip four. And so this is a clip that Hashi texted me last week, maybe. It was literally, it was days before we, like, uh, the NASA yes. sent these, like, tests with the, the actual thing doing the way. Which is a little bummer because I was very excited to see how this turned out. But here is, uh, without further ado, here's Hashi's original uh, approach. Uh, I'm filming myself from my Canon and then piping that through split cam to snap cam, which is allowing me to use this Venom uh, face thingy, which I'm going to record over here in OBS. But the problem is it keeps on putting this Venom logo right where your head is basically it kind of moves with the face except this filter if there's a second person on screen a la my stand-in uh <laughs> so guy dumb. right here uh he becomes <laughs> He's just sitting there carnage and i can move all the way over here to the side where my face is clean of oh I, it switched automatically so, <laughs> so get yeah move over here i love that i'm Off helping you by so being useless again by just that comes on and it's carnage and it tries to put the logo between us we, so we need a lighting stand in man <laughs> okay so weird ass yes so oh my gosh this 
this remarkably silly process uh, is what <laughs> we used um, to do. Um, Seth, if you want to switch yeah. back to my screen, I can kind of share a bit of uh, the general idea um, that at some point um, the uh, the venom takes over. This is this is a little bit of David Hewlett getting taken over by oh it, we're know. small on, on the screen on. all good but uh we just wanted this little uh you know over over the shoulder idea of venom talking and doing things and so <laughs> this is the snapchat uh, version of uh how these gags work <laughs> And to think there's just a was. carnage like s- whirly sitting over in the corner just standing there just sitting you know, right <laughs> over here just garbage <laughs> matted out the entire time <laughs> so yeah so very exciting we kind of have the idea that now this viney head will be talking to him um so really excited about that and uh you can see that basically to try to edit this short i did these um created these little vines in Dow, very similar to what uh, Seth had done in one of our uh, Carnage oh, Call them what they episodes. are, they're me But I literally just rendered out uh, stills of them and just dropped them into here in Premiere. So you could kind of tell when there was supposed to be vines doing things. Um, where is that? Uh... I think this is done. Just ship like, it. Here's a very... That's my favorite. Look at that. That's my, actually, so, I don't want you to change a thing about that shot because it's so funny. The way the way you animated. Boom, boom. <laughs> and then keep the dude, please. Just tossing. <laughs> keep, the, keep this guy. It would be funny if Venom like so hired is... some dude off the street to like as an assistant. And so like you had that character in like randomly living in the house, just throwing things for them and like doing small props. <laughs> I love that idea. So, is so we filmed this short with clearly with no idea how any of the effects were going to be done, and just assuming that we would be able to smart our way through it. And thank God we w- were uh, given this gift of the training team because uh, Seth, can you pull up the? Uh, if everyone wants to take a close look at at the amazing uh, Snapchat quality here compared to oh yeah Podassus's compared to the renders the renders like, and these are and these are I mean like sample. Look at that. Like the render quality can go stunningly better than this. And this hasn't been composited or anything. This is just like the red <sighs> shift. Like, Look at that noise blast. in its skin. I love but, that. So really exciting. And it also means that both the training team and we will be able to try to pass on this kind of info on how to do said things. Um, especially because, uh, yeah, we are enhancing uh, moves by Maxon in the next little while, and I'm very excited to uh, try to figure out how, like, even if there's a potential Halloweeny uh, way to demonstrate how to do creature I'm work, getting, we're I'm very excited Halloween-y about right it. Now. This is I'm a great just, way to get our feet. We're going to have this venom stand over your shoulder and talk to you and talk to us. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. So. Now that you've seen the incredible work that uh, has gone into the most technically complicated part of this short, uh, Seth and I thought that we could run through some of the technically uncomplicated, uh, you know, our knowledge base level shots. And uh, Seth, I have shared a handful of shots with you. You've never seen them. Never seen them in my life. Uh, We're doing an improv episode, folks. So. We ha- <laughs> um, we filmed uh, the exterior of the apartment, uh, and in the script, there is uh, the joke of this entire thing, which I think, Seth, this was your idea, that what if the reason he ends up with Venom is because he lives next door or across the street from the giant science lab that is supposed to that clearly would contain that, experiment maybe that was my idea a, if that was my idea sure but you're right well i'm just giving away jokes the reveal was your idea and the reveal is the funniest part of the whole thing 
Uh, th- I'm going to ruin this whole short by just t- talking about how funny oh, the best will, jokes are. We'll ruin this short over the next uh, several weeks. So when everybody sees it, they can go, neat. <laughs> it, like, is this the, hey man, is the level that's, of... That's uh, where I live nowadays. It's totally good. But you've got a bunch amazing. of stuff to so, you need me to paint out, right? I asked you for some boring work today. I figured I want some Bob Ross. Yes. I want this to be a Bob Ross episode. Uh, at least on my side of things. Wonderful. So I want to paint stuff out and roto stuff. And I assume you want to keep these hands that are brushing his hair. I want the hands in there, but I want to lose his <laughs> eyebrows throughout the entire uh, short if we can. So, it's like the, short, the movie um, already did it, but did they erase yeah. his eyebrows? No, they did not. God, can exactly. I? Exactly. We've got to one, one up How them often somehow. do you go to double click? So, like a uh, a comp or an element in After Effects, and you double click the space in be- the space between the 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 things, and then bring up the import window. Does that happen to you often? I I, I like the double click for importing specifically. No, I don't. And I find more often that I go start double clicking in random apps that don't have that. Really. And not knowing why things don't import. Oh. So I love, I'm constantly like time to open import. this comp. No, stop importing. <laughs> Amazing. But I also liked, uh, your space between, uh, vocalization there. This is how I pronounce it. So. Amazing. Ashi, what do you, do you know when you're planning to have this short finished or is it just <laughs> as soon as we get it done? I'm sorry. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> no, we, um, we would love to have this out uh, sometime around Halloween because it's it's Halloweeny. Um, we have uh, we have missed all the other target dates of uh, having filmed this months before the original Venom came out. Uh, we missed that date. We missed the streaming release date, the Blu-ray release date, the Venom two <laughs> teaser date, the Venom right, two. Initial Don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, so Halloween would be would be twenty twenty four. Now and here's so, uh, my question, Hush. You need tell me what you need. I can tell when they're like the obvious stuff that needs painted out, like the hands and stuff. But these shots, the three, right? Is there anything else? The three. Remarkably, we in the script, the there is a wrong address situation, and so he has delivered a case containing the venom, but. I was too lazy on the location to alter the script to match the number on oh, this boy. house. And so we literally have her saying, this is this address, right? <laughs> While you can see the address in shot and it's not. Do you need a new address. number instead or do you just want so, one? Technically, we could replace it with a two because we know that the number ends in two that she says. Or we could just clone stamp it out and... I don't think anyone would care. What if I do like three minus one equals two, like a math problem on the, will that work or no, it's dumb. I don't know if everyone loves math the (laughs) way that that we do. So how funny would it be on a mailbox is to put a math problem on your mailbox as your address, like a complicated one. Has anyone done that? Because if so, I want to be their friend immediately. I like that. I mean, I feel like this has to exist in in France, where the uh, just because where the, uh, because of how upsetting the uh, seventy through one hundred are. You know, I'm beginning to, to see French. how come the shorts didn't happen on time because we still haven't started <laughs> working yet. Michael, what? I can mute you at any this time, is sir. For me, let me remind you. Oh, uh, there you are. All right. So let's see. There are a couple questions in the chat. Let me see if I can. I'm just um, going to get to work. Address some. So uh, yeah, Chris here is asking if the dim lighting makes the VFX easier. Of course, lack of like lack of well, light and really clear. All right, we call um, it dim lighting. Let's actually see what these are in logs. So let's see what it actually looks like. Are we talking about this shot? Let's do a quick colorista. They make our dreams come true. And let's choose a lot. Do you know what you shot this on? Amazing. I'm... No. <laughs> Hashi, you don't even know what camera you shot it on? I think... I don't know cameras or colors. I, know, I can't... But I can't... Like, are we talking to Black Magic? We talking... Things or things. Canon? No, it was an... It was an... Um, right. Alexa Mini. Alexa All right, let's Mini, go with Alexa Log. Like That's a little too strong. A little oh, too strong. of course. 
my my Alexa hears me talking about that. And oh, I'm God. just letting her know that. Uh, Tell her to shut her. Up. her. I'm sorry. Jeez. So in the meantime, I'm going to pull up a shot uh, over here, Seth, that I have done some prep work on uh, for you. So there's a there's a scene where um, the the vial containing the venom infects uh, Dave, and he did this amazing performance of uh, venom taking over his body, some smoke swirling Hewitt's around great, or something like that. I, 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 for, uh, we just I need feel, to quickly sing the praises he of Hewitt. He's so like the most great. wonderful human being and incredibly funny and gracious. And he is, check him out. And he's in uh, the new season of C, I think, coming out. I think. I don't know. He's in something. A lot of things coming up. Amazing. I let he will pop up in, you know, those like... Uh, yeah. Guillermo del Toro movies here and there as a great, as like great character roles or he'll be that the asshole pilot <laughs> in uh i'm sorry sorry children in um uh planet of the apes the the one responsible for the whoa i didn't that, realize uh, that he was in the the franco movie. planet of the apes yes and no he is the, i haven't is rewatched the... that one in a long time i had no idea I didn't. I didn't know when I had seen it. That was him, and so it's it's fantastic. So, um, yep, responsible. So, like his his last thing you see before they cut oh to the uh, that amazing montage of uh, <laughs> the uh, the virus spreading, which I think also made him trend a little bit right at the beginning of uh, May of uh, 2020. You know, for unrelated reasons, probably. Um, but uh, so anyway. All that to say, uh, here I have this uh, plate, and for you, Seth, I have provided uh, the roto of the body here, and I also did his front arm separately, so you have an additional, you know, arm flopping around if you need it. And uh, the actual reason that I rotoed David and his hand here is because if you're a composite. I'm getting a spinning wheel on both my previous Okay, hold meetings. on. I am now, too. Let me clear up my memory. Bop, 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 bop. Uh, I think we're back. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, everyone. If uh, if, we're, if we're back here, um, I am previewing this little... Uh, this exciting uh, fake depth mat. And... The way I created this uh, was a combination of things. So the first step was just straight up rotoing David from this shot, full body and that arm, as you saw. And honestly, with Roto Brush 2, it was, it was not terribly complicated for this six second shot. So there's a lot of frames, but, um, you know, six times 24, you know, impossible to do math, but, you know, a lot of. Uh, frames so that was done and then I thought oh I forgot about that depth mat uh, machine learning technique that we've been trying on some other episodes and so I did actually try running it through um, a machine learning based uh, thing let's see that is the uh, runway ml and let me preview what it came back with it came back with this which is pretty impressive, to be fair. <laughs> it's uh, a nightmare. The only problem oh. is it is very, it is a nightmare. It's it's very temporally uh, that looks unstable. Like, God, that looks so, like, if you watch devs. Like, as you can see. Oh, man, they have this amazing, no, I can't not yet. anything. They have this amazing visualizer thing that I will not describe in case you guys haven't seen it, but it's really good, and it looks like this, the way that it's, uh, been rendered. That was useless information oh, cool. I just shared. That was con that was premium worldly content for you guys. Just garbage observations. Keep going, Hosh, with your actual information. <laughs> premium worldly. So because it was so flickery, it would mean that if you were trying to use it as a proper depth mat, that you would get, you know, bits of smoke appearing and then disappearing or something like that. And so I actually just took the still of this first frame here and then 
tracked it in place basically uh, to to kind of match the footage because it's pretty a pretty nodal kind of rotation. Like there's not much parallax at all. So uh, the background I was able to just paste on there. And then for the character, I ended up, uh, let me see if I can go back. Hey, real quick, what do you need versions. done on 1020 with Cami? Um, no, it's, is it's a, the number it's, three available it's, in there? It's a shot toward her. Yeah. Uh, or visible in there? Oh, of that one? Oh, okay. I just copied the <laughs> right, wrong right. plate over there. You don't want to paint on her eyebrows too? Amazing. Yes, please. <laughs> Eyebrowless short for me. I feel like too they're a cheat. Yeah. They, they give away too much. <laughs> they're a crutch. And, yeah. And which has no place in filming. Uh, so, oh yeah. So check this out for, for these, I took the, the roto shapes and this isn't a phenomenal solve, but it does kind of look right. Um, I added uh, a four color gradient to these. And what I love about a four point gradient is that basically you see it's this really nice soft grab that you can move four different points on throughout. And I just added a few keyframes to kind of keep it so the head felt like kind of the highest point. And realistically, it should have been all of this, uh, I realize now, but uh, this kind of works. And then I did the same thing on this arm layer, another four color gradient with just a few keyframes, just kind of trying to keep his arm a little bit brighter, but also matching in color over here so they would sort of seam up together. And that created something that looked reasonable for the character that was a lot more stable than the flickeriness of... Uh, the other thing. So that mixed with this uh, rotating still of the background that lines up pretty darned well with the plate. You can kind of see like that. Hmm. Created this fake depth mat. And uh, yeah, if anyone uh, does not know what you can do with these, basically it's a wonderful Luma tool that you can use to selectively place things in the scene that are in front of, behind different things based on their perceived depth within the shot. So pretty cool. So let me show, uh, so once Seth starts working in here, he could use this depth map, for example, to tell particular that this area is deep in the scene and David's head is forward in the screen. So the particles can be comped among uh, the actual depth of this or let me show you a really uh another a straightforward silly example let's add a uh text layer and just say depth i love that my default uh, I also font love in you said, uh, comic sans straightforward silly uh, for example straightforward it's that's monty python's whole thing right you know it's just there's all right so here we go. We got this word depth here. And uh, in just the best font and the best so color. It really is. Oh, let me quickly revert to the uh, one of the newer versions of this project before I demo this. Um, can I paste my text layer in here? I can't. Oh, come on. Why don't you paste from where we were before? I don't want to write this again. So I'll write again. No, that's silly. All right, so check out this. So if I have this text layer that's just kind of hanging out here, and down here I have this hidden uh, depth mat, if I want, I can take this layer and I'll say, let's apply a channel set mat effect. And I'll tell the set mat effect to refer to this depth layer. And I'm going to say the effects and masks. And in this case, it's from the based on the luminance. So uh, what you see happening here is that parts of these letters have become a little bit transparent and parts are visible. So I'm going to check, in this case, invert mat. And now you'll see a little hint that things near the floor are darker and things that are kind of intersecting with the couch are more transparent. So if I go to my actual depth mat, it's a nice soft grad 
from, you know, pretty dark to kind of bright. But if I add something to clamp this down, like I'm just going to use a, a legacy brightness and contrast because it demo, demonstrates it very well. Um, I can crunch this down, turning up the contrast, and make it so just the most foreground bits are sticking through. Or if I key my brightness up, I can kind of suddenly have this area forward. And so since this text layer up here is using this as a, a set mat, when I see it in my comp, let me turn everything off except for that, I can adjust the brightness and contrast on the depth mat and use it to selectively place bits of a layer behind or in front of a character. So if we had something like smoke emitting from this, I can easily, just with the one layer as reference, have this text layer get composited behind David, which is really cool. And you can even do there's the other weird stylized things with a with this. So I could if I had this up front and uh, multiplying on top of this footage, um, I look at this. I can it's like a, a weird lighting thing where I can. <laughs> oops, uh, that's so cool. Far, now for, you're doing like for, an uh, old like uh, a flashback, yeah, like a memory, here. like one of those like a like in Loki or something, some kind of memory vision of some yes. kind of sci-fi movie or Minority Report. Totally. So you can like look at this. Like you can reveal from the from the back to the front, based on the depth. And uh, yeah, another really bizarre thing you can do with depth mats uh, is something that I was experimenting with. Uh, I don't know if I saved a uh, version of it or not. Meanwhile, I am painting. Do, do, up, I'm painting do. out this three. I did try to uh, uh, I don't, I don't content think... to wear fill on the first comp, and then I got a snooty remark from Michael in the uh, Slack saying, "Are you not going to use Spot Clone Tracker?" And I'm here to admit that, yeah, you know what? I thought it was maybe a little too big, but <laughs> no, it's actually perfect. Spot Clone Tracker is working wonders. So, I love Spot Clone Tracker. I just didn't. I I think of it for zits. I forget that I can use it on numbers too. Back to you, Hush. Wonderful. Yo, so uh, so just a, a quick, uh, um, just to mention where uh, the 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 machine learning assisted depth mat came from. It is from the very easy to remember app dot runway ml dot com. Um, so. This is that site that I've referred to several times that effectively has a a bunch of uh, video post processing Please. things that it can do. Uh, the one that I find the most useful is either it's uh, automatic rotoscoping. Uh, Corridor played with it uh, in an episode where they detail out the actual process a little bit more um, and likely paid for <laughs> an account. I'm still <laughs> using the free low res version of everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it allows you to take, you know, create, use this machine learning estimation to create a depth mat for any kind of footage, however it was shot and also does, uh, interesting, uh, let's see, like here's a, oops, error loading this file. Anyway, you can run different types of models in a very user-friendly way uh, through this interface. And it's a great companion to uh, adding effects that might need lighting integration, like uh, VFX Bang, uh, if you want to add flashes on someone's face or something like that. If you have a depth mat, you can really choose an exact slice of your footage that you want to be being affected by um, any any portion based on the depth, which is really neat. So even if I had just taken the, the original machine learning version of the depth mat and had it overlaid on top of the original footage, let me see. Here we go. So it's very flickery, of course, but if I decided that I wanted to 
change this, you know, use toner to make it kind of a fiery color or something like this, and then use it as overlay. Um, I guess I'd probably want a little bit more contrast in here. Let me see. Let's turn up that contrast. Let's use legacy version. And then I'll turn down the uh, opacity of the layer a little bit. If I play this through, it'll be flickery, but like it's it's interesting that it's respecting everything that it's cut out in here in a way. So you could fake like that there's a fire off screen or something like that using these depth mats, or you can get really bizarre effects like that. Like, look at this. This is weird. Another thing that depth mats are used for is they can be piped in as a displacement map. So if I hide this down here, go to my original footage. Um, let me copy over the Cineon converter because it looks a little bit silly without it. And Seth, don't mean to talk over uh, uh, what you're doing. I'm trying to figure out uh, the easiest way to paint out are you, this uh, oh, you're red. And I actually am going to stop doing what I was doing. And I might just... Somehow I've found that whenever I decide to try to paint out fishing wire or something that I feel like this has got to be basic because they used to do it all the time, I <laughs> it ends up being somehow the yeah. most complicated thing ever because... I'll, you know, like I, I'll film the fishing wire backlit to make sure that it really, you know, shows up on screen. Uh, no, I so think I don't envy uh, your task do there. I'm just going to go frame by frame and erase it and then do content to where Phil, um, rather than try and key frame a mask or anything like that, I feel like it's just going to be more fun to just uh, get weird with it, to get meticulous with it. Um. Uh, I love it. So here's this Hockey, example. The chat is asking about the runway ML stuff. Does the footage need a lot of motion in it to get a good depth map? Does it work on a you can You could, could even send it a better? still. You can send it a still image, which is what I did uh, last week when I wanted uh, to try to quickly uh, get a, uh, let's see, where was it? My models, my assets, where did I have it? I just had this still frame of this guy with glasses and I wanted a depth mat. And so I just fed it the still image and it gave me this. So I think it's running its algorithm on every frame, basically. And I believe it's trying to do something to enhance the temporal coherence is the terminology they use, I believe, um, which just means flicker. Um, but I have found that so far, the at least the, what I'm getting from the free return is a little bit too flickery to use for anything that's more than a few frames uh, without doing a lot of work to try to rebalance uh, everything throughout. But it's great if you just want an environment in a still frame and a depth map for it. it it'll do a pretty decent job. And yeah, who knows? If you wanted to to pay for a subscription, you can send these off. And then they'll come back, uh, you know, presumably uh, computed with more love or care. So, um, you know, with the, with the kind, with the really talented bots they have there, as opposed to the uh, grunt work bots. Seth, the chat is wondering why you're not using the CC because wire this wire doesn't say straight effect that's in After Effects. Because... I'm saying that's that's what I told them. I said it's. It, it works great on straight yeah, lines no for like for this. A, a wire that someone's hanging off of. But and for I, something that's I, all, I started all by making like, like a shape is, path, like just a, a mask or a, a path that I could, with a, a bezier that I could, you know, keyframe to this wire and then set it sub, uh, set with like a silhouette blend mode or something. But uh, then I, it, I just realized I was going to, it was going to be easier on my own. <laughs> For some reason, it's easier for me to go frame by frame and just paint than it is for me to go frame by frame and adjust a keyframe. I don't know why that is. I've had I've had similar I have similar things like that where I just I, if I'm going to go frame by frame, I, I want say, this is uh, a, I'm looking at this. A this is a long yeah, plate. I didn't realize it was ten seconds. Without. 
It, it is oh, a bit of a long, long plate. I like to shoot long <laughs> well, plates the actually, with very visible you know things it only that need to be painted out. Three seconds. So I'm about thirty percent of the way done. <laughs> and also, you oh, might good. be working in the uh, the handle. I think I for just finished too. the handle for the just, shot. <laughs> not not that you know. Uh, perfect. So the yeah so. The handle for the shot is, are the extra frames that you give, just in case editorial uh, wants to adjust timing as well, of the cut a bit. Also allows for motion blur as well, because a lot of times on the first frame with particular so in this case, something I think you want I... in motion blur, it allows it to get mm -hmm. to get simulations going in those frames and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's uh, so Seth is working in the handle the right now. My so I'll, I'll make the shot longer to, to the honor the VFX shot. Is biography. what you should always uh, do. But. So wonderful. So I'm trying to remember what else, uh, what could be fun to to show off that uh, is accomplishable. I would be happy to jump in on some. Uh, oh, you know. Oh, by the I way, the numbers are I gone. I finished those shots. Although uh, if. The plates you sent me so, that were camis, like, does that mean there's a number shot that he didn't get sent to me in, in those place, places? <laughs> okay. Um, well, they were really you easy know, to do. it's possible. So. <laughs> I am, yeah. The other thing you would normally have is a post-production supervisor who is aware of who was getting what. And in this case, in this volunteer army scenario, uh, that is probably supposed to be Ooh. me. Whoever and, hired uh, you. I do not uh, do or organize. Know, know better. Yes. Yeah, I, I... All right. So there is a bit of a joke later where um, everything is all fun and games with Venom as a roommate until they realize that he is possibly a murderous uh, symbiote. So... If I can find it, there's a shot that is, uh, it's sort of like waking <laughs> up hungover and reali not realizing what Venom has been to all night. And so I have uh, this little shot here of, uh, he walks into his destroyed bathroom and is kind of like, oh man, it, the vibe you know, for David is supposed to be, your messy roommate has is destroyed you know, your space and annoying. Um, but what I would like to add is just a hint as he walks into the bathroom that there is a body a shoved into this cabinet somehow. Exactly. So uh, feel free to suggest what you think uh, would be the funniest version of this. I have several ideas. One is that the door is a little bit off its hinge and you can see a tangled body kind of revealed how would you how, this door what? off the hinge. The other is the door is closed with just some like fingers yeah, I kind think of you hanging need, out you need or one, something. Uh, like you know, a digit or a ligament to insinuate a body. Like you don't really insinuate a body with a with like, you know, a uh, a tangle of ligaments. You do it with it's the best is always with just one, with a foot or a hand or something like hanging out. Um mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. So what do we what do think? A foot or a, a foot hand? Is I think a lit, less you know, gruesome a... and more comical. A, a hand kind of to me mm -hmm. insinuates life, but a foot it's a so foot personal. just insinuates random dead body. <laughs> you stick that thing in a wood chipper, yeah. what you know, that's comedy, you know. All right, so I'm gonna just try running the camera tracker in here on this and see what uh that's what makes happens. me think of that gag in Mission Impossible Three <clears throat> where Philip Seymour Hoffman gets hit by the truck and just his shoe remains. Uh, I love, I love just the wooden <laughs> shoe. Oof. Nice. You're yeah, tell enjoying me, I wanted painting. a Bob Ross episode. Now are you painting? Are you painting? Are you... I love it. You're painting, painting with a mouse. Uh, Cause I, I, my iPad is kind of uh... over and done with and I need a new one. I mean, I would use a Wacom for this if I had Michael. one. <laughs> Michael, I don't. I do. It just makes it it's just so much easier than paint than trying to but draw hey, with a potato. But hey, look how I'm doing. I don't have a potato. I'm drawing with a. Hey, my fridge is covered yeah. with artwork. Uh, I'm actually drawing with a, 
uh, it's a trackpad. I don't know what vegetable you would compare that to. <laughs> Amazing. All right. We are solving the camera, says the thing. And I didn't even need to track this whole shot, but I did. We'll see. We could add some other little details to it. Like if you're, when you don't have time for production design, people always love when you solve stuff in post later. It's it's the preferred way it's to. Still, it's still worse when shoot you stuff when you're because a pro. then you then it's 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 one thing to hate a director. It's another thing to hate yourself, and <laughs> that yes. self loathing is just something that nobody. I don't. I don't and you're like, yeah. you know that you know better. And you don't know why you believed in yourself so much. Like my thing on set lately, I had a thing where I, I think, I don't know if I said this on the show, but I directed a commercial uh, last month where um, I actually requested tennis balls on a C-stand. Like in the moment, I was like, you know, do we have any extra C-stands with tennis balls? And uh, and Chris yes. goes, yeah, you, we got them on the truck. We'll get them. And, there was a, and they went to get them and there was a pause. Chris Adams is my DP. He goes... Guys, I want you to know this is in the years of working, my years of working with Seth Worley, this is his very first visual effects ask on set ever. I'm always the, there's something in me that's always, <laughs> I want to be the guy who's like, nah, we don't need, we don't need a green screen. Nah, we don't need tracking markers. Nah, like I want to look cool in the fact that I can, I can do the work and like show everybody. They don't know what they're, they don't know yes. what they're talking about. It's yeah. way easier than they think it is. It does. It feels like a flex to say. It feels like, like a flex. can handle anything. And then suddenly when you're handling Miserable. everything, yeah. you are... Oh, that was the uh, story yeah. of Darker exactly. Colors, the mm -hmm. short film. Hey! hey. <laughs> the Fonz, the, the official master. <laughs> Look at this. Do you want just this? <laughs> I made your tentacles right here. <laughs> hey, yeah. That, I didn't even think just, about that. Just, just throw some, just throw a bevel, alpha. bevel at oh it. Yeah, bevel alpha. alpha. A little bit of, a little bit of, you know, really funny to place, do a monster rough in the edges. Oh my gosh. You know where I was going? I was about to say, it'd be really funny to do a monster movie with hand drawn monsters, but good God, Whirly have, have more than one idea. Uh, I see. see. Well, hey, Dark That's my joke. That's my monsters. joke. Have more than one idea, Whirly. But look at this. This is better than all the visual, arguably better than all the visual effects I did on darker colors is this right here. No, it's, no, it's I no, hard done with disagree. Love. Some of those shots in darker colors are amazing. I especially loved that one massive shot. With that's Mr. Mr. Hashimoto dragon. right there. That, that's the best there. shot in the whole thing. Well, I love that you keep giving me credit, but you also don't ever compare what I turned into you versus what you Buddy, put into your shorts. It is, so, way, look, uh, it is way more fun to celebrate the work of other people than it is to celebrate my own. <laughs> that's because that's you're the not first time anyone's ever said that to me <laughs> that's the well, sweetest thing you've ever said well, to me michael Seth Worley. <laughs> <laughs> your, your catchphrase is not a narcissist so. oh man all right i'm gonna content to where phil this oh, mother bitch this mother bitch that's easy that's better <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the. That's the. Yeah, the, the script. Oh, the script yes, name it is. I almost queen, left Surface uh, on, and we would get to see uh, Predator Goldblum uh, happen again. Let's turn to object film method. I show that uh, off. I, that's my like go to in, in my my VFX class when I'm teaching uh, paint out and stuff. That with the week I do paint outs and stuff. Like I'm talking mm -hmm. about content to wear film. Like here's why you want to leave it on object mode, and I pull up that Goldblum clip. That is that. In case people aren't familiar, I'll pull it up here because it's worth it. And because you know, when you leave it, uh, I mean, I I, right. I can't. I'm not really good at explaining the scientific process behind the well, the the mathematical process going on behind each fill method. But the way I understand it, uh, object mode is. Uh, object mode is for painting out objects and surface mode is for painting out surfaces. Be and the, that if you have it set to surface mode, it will try to keep, it will try to like keep the texture that it's recreating in flow with the motion happening underneath it. Whereas if you mm -hmm. use object mode, it is, it, it, it disregards the motion underneath it and simply tries to stitch and paste the texture and a, and, and, and paste it into the motion of the background. So here's the original shot from The Lost World Giraffe. Oh, nope. 
Here's the original. This is not the original shot from the Lost World Jurassic Park. This is in which Mr. Goldblum scares a poor woman whose daughter is being attacked by dinosaurs by yawning in a subway station. When we entered a pandemic last year and we all started getting adjusted to Zoom, I really wanted... I wanted this as my Zoom background, this 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 tropical back, backdrop, and so I because basically I wanted to make the two people in my life in the world that would get the reference laugh, which is Hashi and Dan Sturm. That's basically it, and so I brought it into After Effects and I did content to Phil, not knowing I could do it in Photoshop yet at the time, um, and I left it on surface mode, fill method instead of object. And what I got was this amazing gold bloom predator moments where the background sticks to him. Uh, it's what what's crazy. There are, there are a few. It may just be one, and I feel bad for not knowing the name offhand. I, sometimes this some an effect like this can be called data moshing, and there is an artist who just does all data moshes from one image to the next using frames of it. It's the most trippy looking thing, but they artistically use um, the motion of other clips to inform the motion of previous pixels as they all sort of overlap. So it'll be like a log and then suddenly the log stretches out all the way into a cat that is turning around and then it's a spoon and a teacup it, it's just it's a very cool i just want to do I can a whole find them i'll try to share them with this online with point. jeff goldblum and this and <laughs> this with jeff applied to him yes yeah and there's a if uh you have not seen my um vfx side quest yeah, uh, dude, called the template freaking, of doom like hack this um, to the, your like that has yeah, disappointing numbers, everyone. I want I want y'all to to jump in there and melt faces. It's a free this is face melting. Hashi says disappointing numbers. Sake. I want to see what disappointing numbers are for a Hashi tutorial. I'm just gonna do this live. I'm just curious. I won't say it. I'm just gonna. Say, just, Not a no, narcissist. I am a narcissist. Michael Michael's assessment was his own assessment. <laughs> Yeah, it's using up all my my RAM. That's not worth it. I'll do it some other time. I'll I won't. I'll forget. Um, uh, one of the things I was doing over here was uh, I'm quickly uh, throwing a garbage mat in front of uh, David who walks in here. That way his data isn't counted in the camera track as much. I always recommend doing that if you're doing a camera track. You can always start without doing it, and it might work great. But uh, I had a lot of sliding um, with where the track ended up. So now I think if I camera track this, it'll be a little bit more faithful. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> let's background track that. So yeah, that uh, the face melting template also tries to break down what Content Aware Phil is doing, including an interview with content aware <laughs> phil describing uh why uh, why things happen the way they do it's really so great. uh so it's check really, that really out great. at your leisure analyzing in background well we're both analyzing so what's going on in your life oh you're moving uh moving 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 leaving this place no it's it's how many times Adult have you life moved in your life? Or Seth? like including as a child? Uh, both. Both are fun because like child informs like at what stages you had to be reinventing oh, yourself, shit. being plopped into new schools and uh, stuff. I moved, tw- let's see, I moved once before I was old enough to know it. Moved once in kindergarten, from kindergarten to first grade. That was, that was like, that was when we moved to like my childhood home, the home that's in plot device and that's in a whole bunch of like all my work up until plot device and right after. And then, uh, moved to college, moved, hang on. So I'm, I, I'm not counting like college because it's like, that's, that's not, that's different. So I would say as an adult, 
Uh, we live in one apartment, second apartment, house, uh, other house, L.A., uh, depressing period, living back with my parents and my whole family in with my parents, and then to the depressing condo during the pandemic, and then the house we're in now. So that's nine time, nine times as an adult. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. That is, that's a lot. Hashi, the chat has asked if you use the normalized script on this scene. Um, I will when I get a track that I like. Um, this this track is doing interesting things around here, and I don't know if that's because of David arriving or if it's because of the camera tilt. They happen simultaneously, so I feel like I blocked out enough of David's data that I think it's that there's a I can't tell if there's uh, any distortion on this clip that is leading to a bad track, in which case I have an additional solve, um, which would be to look and see if I'm getting distortion curves in this footage. So if I am, what I would do is I would apply... It's a very wide-angle lens, so I'd be willing to bet that you are. Mm -hmm. So let me delete this tracker, and then I'm going to apply um, VFX lens distortion. I don't think that we've had or lens distortion. We have sure. I don't know if we've had an opportunity to use this on this show. So let me show you what it does. Um, one of the reasons why this track is probably having a little bit of an issue is because all of these should be straight lines. But if you look at them, because of the wide angle lens, we've got some slight curvature to things happening, to things that are supposed to be straight up and down. And so because of that curvature, it really confuses spatially what uh, is trying to be solved here. So Lens Distortion Matcher is a really fun tool where you just have this simple visual interface to find some frame where you see something that is supposed to be straight but is actually curving. So for example, this the front line of the sink, and I'm just going to draw the shape of where it is supposed to be. And then I'm going to find one more line that should be straight, for probably this one. Matcher, I did one right after it came out involving some bunch of jets and dinosaurs that uh, got pr like one of some of the coolest results is yeah, in my experience, one of the best uh, it's uses really cool. for lens distortion matcher is this big old fisheye, like, jet GoPro shot. Mm -hmm. So it's a very visual way to... So you can see it best on this uh, top line here. Um, you just plot out a few points, and you can see the kind of curve happening there. And you can see that this one ended up being aligned pretty straight because it's going right out toward the edge of the camera there. So it takes that bit of information. And I can either say just remove the distortion just as a an undistort tool, or I can say create an undistortion pre-comp. So I'm going to do that. And it'll look like it did nothing. But what actually happened is I'm now getting this plate where, uh, let me see if I can uh, reveal it more easily. Here we go. Look at this. Here is my undistorted plate where all of these, the angles of this counter are perfect straight lines. And it did that throughout, I may have guessed a little bit wrong here. Looking at that, I think I did. But um, this is a slightly exaggerated version of, uh, of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Let me go back a little bit and try uh, picking some a, a different frame to pull my uh, curved lines from. So right, yeah, maybe here I can see a little bit more clearly. Okay, let me try that again real quick. Um, this line is curved and should not be. And down here, this is, whoops. Oh. Meant to escape I'm gonna have to rebuild this toothbrush. I'm already looking at it, and and I might have to rebuild his. Oh yeah. I might just copy his right shoulder and repeat it on his left shoulder if this doesn't work. Haha, <laughs> ha. 
you're working on a shot that I actually might have. Oh, you uh, already did it. Done some pre work in. Uh, <laughs> I think okay. I actually did then do I'll a little bit of work in there. The shot, let, let. No, it's okay. I'm so sorry. No, I mean, I didn't get very it's far. Fine. It, so. It's fine. It's just Roto. Amazing. Have you done anything I'm with this I'm just over shot? here poorly using Spoon, our tools Spoon. that are actually really cool. Um, I, th- I think I actually grabbed uh, Sorry, the, his empty shoulder the, from another the shot. The spoon and, and like, uh, coffee it... shot. You done that? Oh. All right. Uh, no, I have not done anything with that yet. I was thinking that it's it might be possible to extract those arms and content aware fill in that space because it's a relatively still a shot, and you might be able to key the shape of that dark black of his arms. You want to you so that's extract what I would try it or like prime at it? Uh, prime out would be great too. Prime out would be much more visually arms, straightforward. Are they not going to be? Are they not going to be completely covered by the tentacles? Are you, are you wanting like a really really skinny tentacle? They're pretty skinny. Uh, They're skinny, pretty so skinny uh, by the end. And just also for the sake of uh, freeing up the plate for the animator. Mm. Uh, and so in this case, uh, it would be like a lot of the, the tentacle development has been done by Darren Frankowitz. If you've seen any of his training material, uh, very clever solutions, both to the material rigs you can do and to the uh, a rigging pipeline for tentacles, which are just weird. They're, they're weird things that have, uh, <laughs> um, they can be spline based, they can have some joints, but also they need some randomness in them to look alive. And so I'm relying on much more intelligent uh, 3D minds than, uh, than mine to try to solve this. So yeah, if you can get the majority of that color out of there, Seth. The the matte choking or the the degree of your you might be able to uh, expand that outward. If that makes sense. It does. Uh, I'm gonna have to roto some foreground stuff, but it does about yeah. You're right. It does me about eighty percent of the work. That's pretty good. So I'm going to see if my uh, undistorted plate, uh, what that looks like over here. All right, so that's trying to keep things better. Let me see if this tracks any better. And in fact, I probably want to put my... um, plate where I have matted out Venom. This is this is all tremendously exciting to watch. So I, I, I I'm excited to see what is going to happen over with your Seth. With this? Oh man, who knows? I yes. I'm imagining you're you're right, it's a good idea here. I'm gonna content to where Phil and then I'll go in and if it did a decent job removing them, I'll just roto the foreground elements and bring them back um from the original plate. Yeah. So if you happen to just be joining us, uh, what Seth and I are doing is we are working on shots from a nearly forgotten short that was going to be done by Red Giant just before we merged with Maxon and just before uh, the movie Venom was going to come out. And so we wrote a short that was all about uh, what if instead of a, you know, an action movie, if it was more like a messy roommate comedy situation where uh, what would it be like having to live with Venom day to day uh, invading your space and your body. So uh, it turns out that we were slow enough at making this that now Marvel has already integrated this into the the sequel to the movie. Uh, a great sequence that is remarkably evocative of what we were trying to do and uh, even some other, uh, there are some commercials, I can't remember, uh, there's one even called like My Roommate Venom commercial that came out yesterday that is imagining somebody who had Tom Hardy, or what? It, what is it, Eddie, and Venom as no, a the char- roommate. The character's name is Tom Hardy, actually. The character's name, I love it. <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, there's a, I can't remember what the campaign is for, but it's a, some integrated marketing material uh, they shot on the set with a, really? another. And it's, is it yes. just like this? It is. It's, it's so much like this. It's embarrassing. It is irksome to read the words untitled project at the top of your window. Oh really? While you're working, <laughs> instead of having Why? That's the safest save. way to work. If you, as soon as you title it, then you lament if you lose it. Oh wait, no, it's the opposite. That's with pets, with After Effects projects. Name them immediately <laughs> so they don't get lost. Also, the forever. the title adds a significant amount of uh, uh, RAM and and information to the project. It just makes the project slightly Obviously. bigger. Dead body thing. I love that I'm promising a dead body and I've done nothing even remotely interesting <laughs> over here. We've looked at a cabinet on this side of the screen for the last half hour. I mean, this is what visual Amazing. effects are. It is. Hey, I feel like you did something with this mirror, with this uh, hanger shot already. Did you not? Uh, no, I think I did a little bit of like a fake rotoed uh, clock wipe transition in uh, Premiere. So like he... Oh. Let me think. So um, you haven't painted these. You know guys what? No, out. I've, I've not painted these guys out. Uh, is it too much to show the thing that I showed you right before we started the? Uh, yeah, we'll save it. We'll let that be a fun surprise for the final thing. The thing I sent you right before we started the show. Wait, what did you say? In, via what? Uh, via Slack. Oh, it was. Uh, it was a, th a thing that I tried for the beginning of this. Oh my god. Uh, uh, yeah, let's save it. Let's save it. Okay. You'll have something. I something feel like look the, to. I feel like the most the most useful stuff I've done for the short so far. We can't really show on the. I mean, honestly, the most useful work that I do, I we don't I don't do on this show. This show is always me. Like, uh, I can't make a mirror reflection happen. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, check out this thing that's really cool that people would like yeah. in our private channel, uh, just you and me. Oh, I know we got we got to figure out how to how to invert those wor worlds somehow without That's giving away corporate secrets or spoiling huge corporate uh, secrets. Huge corporate secrets. Shorts. That's actually the, the the story of like my work in general for the past several years has been uh, trying to get larger projects made and therefore doing a lot of work that no one ever sees and uh, mm -hmm. and then, and you can't tell anybody about. Yeah, it. yeah. Even though I really could, because no <laughs> no one bought it, so. Who knows? Hey, hey, let's uh, yeah, let, let's let's dig into this, Seth. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> VFX and therapy with Hashi and Seth. Amazing. How is everybody else's mental health doing? I, ne I never check in with you all in the audience. How's everyone? So how's, how's, everyone how's everyone's mental I'll, health? I'll it's such a question to ask. I'll respond talk simply show. in a in in chat form. And we'll 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 get into it. We'll we'll talk about it. All right. I've now run the camera tracker on this uh, shot again. I didn't even roto out David this time. I'm just uh, or garbage mat him out. I'm just uh, using this as it came in. So let's try this. Let's create a solid and a camera there, and let's see if it gets all wonky at the end. It looks like it sticks now. Hey, that's so wonderful. Let me grab a, create a little solid up here for the thing. Hey, stuff is actually sticking now. That's great. So now that I have a camera track that actually works, um, you can see how much distortion is being taken out of the lens to straighten out these angles so the camera tracker in After Effects doesn't have to deal with the curvature. So like, look at all that. So this is... This is lens distortion matcher. It's really fun. So it'll take all of the work that I do in here, and then back here, it's re-applied the distortion, and everything, all of my VFX elements are conscious of, like right here on the bottom, where this the pixels of that cabinet really get stretched out, so do this the pixels from that temporary solid right there. So it even can make though such a huge difference in selling a visual effects shot, because you don't think 
this is a distorted shot when you're watching a movie you just see the scene and your your brain automatically corrects that curvature but the visual effects if they don't match it 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 just doesn't yeah. feel right it's remarkable how because i think for action movie kid i've never on lens distorted something properly and so if you ever watch elements fly out of the edge of frame i do the classic uh just add like three keyframes right at the end there so it like moves fast off the edge of frame even though it's a 3d thing and should have been for free but uh what i'm going to do now is i'm going to scale up uh this blue solid i'm rotating it only using the uh, little uh gizmos on the side here because I want it to maintain the three tracked points that I got there so it's basically a flat surface and then I'm going to rename this particular solid wall just like that and then once I do that I'm going to run uh, I can't tell if it's on screen or not I'm going to scrunch my window down a little bit thank you now here we go the normalized track script. And um, if we could, Michael, can you find the, uh, um, you'd be wonderful to be able to share the, the link for this. Uh, I have both the tutorial on it, on our channel, on uh, using it and uh, running through it. But this uh, is a free script that you can basically dock and put right into After Effects. But what it does is right now, if I reveal the position and rotation of this wall layer, look at this. It is its position is negative twenty three thousand six hundred and seventeen, sixteen thousand and fifty four thousand pixels. So that's just stupid. Those are <laughs> dumb numbers to work with. And so, if I when I rename this wall, I can highlight these guys and then I can just press this normalized track button right here a boom and suddenly the position is now 2050 by 1153 by zero the reason it's that is because that is exactly uh, what exactly half of these new comp dimensions so if I add anything like a new solid and it had you know so like a checkerboard on it or whatever let me make it a really obvious to see kind of thing. Uh, whenever I have a new layer and I say become a 3D layer, immediately it is now centered and appropriately scaled right here. It centers itself right where that cabinet is, right where that stand-in is. And that is the default position for all 3D objects that come into the screen. And it's so nice because if you're using a particle simulation or anything else that requires the after effects space to be integrated into this you don't get astronomical numbers like whatever that was it's something that was, it was it was absurd and uh uh joe from workbench who designed this plugin also was very clever in that he stored the original data down here in this locked layer called the original base so at any point this plugin can or the script basically can recall where everything was before based on the relative translation delete it or reapply it or if you decide to track in new objects you can add that he thought this through to an amazing degree and uh it's so wonderful so uh learn how that works and really if you take away nothing else uh use that if you're 3d tracking Excellent. So now I've got this. Now I just got to figure out uh, what uh, body I'm going to jam in there. All right. So now I'm trying to decide. Is a hand too gross? I really, I really still like the hand because it's so, Dude, it's, it's your short. so the mean. Hundred percent. It actually might read right. better in that bathroom so, uh, than foot. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So. I mean, unless it was a bare foot, like if it was a shoed foot, it wouldn't. I thought you meant like well, a human, like a, like an animal bear foot, like like a grizzly bear's foot. I was like, yeah. <laughs> did those read <laughs> yeah, better? Kill the bear and shove it under there, and not like 
the San Francisco kind of bear. I mean, like an yeah. actual bear, a real live Yogi bear. Amazing. Okay, so we need a uh, a dead hand to place in this. So, what is the lighting like here? Pretty dark, so we have a lot of wiggle room, probably. So, uh, yeah, if any of y'all want to post post a picture of your dead hand hanging out of a cabinet, I'll track it right into here. <laughs> this is your chance to shine. Your hand hey. could be in a red giant short very soon. Post them in the chat. Oh man, for real, actually. First, first person to post a a a, a suitable, uh, just lifeless hand is do is is doing this. I could absolutely grab it from my camera feed right now and just be done. But do that, and and you get to be featured in the short. <laughs> All right, so so we're gonna look for just you could take it with your iPhone. It's gonna be pretty small in frame, so the res doesn't matter a whole lot, but. Uh, we will preview them for lighting purposes. Uh, Michael, can you take a look at any hands that people send in, and uh, we will we'll pick a, a candidate and credit you as the as a dead body. Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes out for any raised hands. Or yes, lowered, but dead hands. by by submitting the the likeness of your hand, you are agreeing in perpetuity to us owning the likeness and <laughs> and and other legal things of uh, of of. Of I love that you could have hand. just gone to Unsplash and found a hand, but you 100% are crowdsourcing this uh, this hand. Hey, I, I, yes, do it. I. All right. Uh, how do like how should we? How can we receive these, Michael? Do they need to be a, saved in the drive um, so we can web link them? I mean, see, we will. We will people we'll, can't post links in the chat because YouTube doesn't let that happen. I know so what to you do. Have to tweet them. You could. Oh yeah, that's it. Red Do that. <laughs> oh yeah, tweet them at Red Giant. Michael, if you didn't, it, it'd be so tweet funny, Michael, if Red you Giant. didn't run the Twitter account. Yeah, if Red like News. somebody else at the company did, and they just started getting all of these hand tweets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, please. Hashtag, add the hashtag VFX and chill. Or VFX hand chill, whichever From one. A you bunch want. of dead hands. <laughs> oh my god no See? just use the regular vfx and chill you know that's very funny <laughs> i'm not searching for vfx hand chill i'm searching for vfx and chill yes oh, send them in it's very funny so nice Seth. to I very me much i'm never that nice to you michael it. at least not on the mic <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh this is lovely Okay, so in the meantime, um, at first I was thinking like the the door would be like off of its hinges or something like that, but I kind of like that it is completely closed. Yeah. And somehow, oh yeah, just hand poking out the bottom. It is, it yes, is that closed strong enough. <laughs> so let me see uh, if uh, let me find a, a a nice little like blood splatter. I'm um, I'm sure I have one around here somewhere. Just all the all the fun stuff that you always have around, you know. I mean, if you don't have one handy, Action VFX, as my shirt attests, has some free blood spotters stuff. There's that shirt. You actually do. You see it now. Let me Sorry, it was easier. The visuals. That. Action VFX by Michael. Oh, wait, look. Michael is now Halloween Michael. Anything that floats around like this is a Halloween version of it. So mm -hmm. Spooky. Goodbye. It really is. Oh, Hashi, did you... Oh, no, you didn't. Never mind. I thought you muted yourself. Let's see. So what do I... Oh. I could easily have... By the way, Let's I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I should have just painted out the mug and out the whole quick. spoon entirely because that data is messing with content to where fills. Ah, uh, yeah. I feel like it would be a lot easier to have a yeah. 3D spoon versus yeah. trying to you make see, the this is follow this the is why people movement. this is why we think that's a reconstruct entire scenes um i put the i put a link to the free blood effects from action vfx in the chat by the way excellent so yeah feel so go grab those so like, i want just a nice bit of i don't want to overdo it 
No, there's just there's just little blood splatter collection. Yeah. Let's see, I'm downloading one you know that I, think uh, I might do. I might just cut out overpowered. the table. I might just camera track this like general sh- like handheld this like the camera movement and then yes. He, general he handheld. Is, yes, that's, general the, handheld. that's the bad guy in the, <laughs> of the headshot, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, cut out the <laughs> table and the the mug and then I'm going to uh, just get a f- clean plate of the background and just have the whole thing be like faked at the beginning and then roto back in my stuff like my mug or my the the coffee pourer. I don't even need the coffee pourer. I could find a 3D version of that. Now I'm make now I'm really doing it the way ILM does it. Yeah, we. It is funny to, to yeah decide in real time. You know what? We shot this, but it's like you know, I've, I've talked about this on the show it's, it's, when it's we spent hard. all this budget <laughs> from Spy versus Guy on a on an old '64 Buick or whatever it was that's in that least beautiful car, and then Rabinowitz painted it out and replaced oh. it with a model and blew that model up. <laughs> Classic. There's also now there's some. Uh, advertisement right now that is uh, that opens with with a very similar car blowing up it's like a twitter grab your oh, really? attention thing i've meant to screenshot it for you but it's the same framing it's that same car and it blows up and but except it blows up by there being an explosion under it oh, so it nice. flips toward camera and i think it actually looks less realistic than the one uh well, Rubino, it's that good, you man. have Anyway, yeah, here I'm just just putting on screen the uh, the blood textures from Action VFX, and uh, you can grab that from the link. Hashi uh, Ryan in the chat is saying he noticed that these sequences are in 24 frames per second drop frame. Is that standard for a project like this? And what are the pros cons of VFX in drop frame and non drop frame? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you start talking to us about drop frames and um, we don't know. I, I truly don't don't know. I knew that the, the goal was uh, 24 frames per second in general. And I do not know if there was any advantage for the sake of the camera or anything that it was shot in drop frame. I don't know if I realized it until we were trying to gather stats for the other VFX artists working on it. That I'm like, huh, it's not a clean 24. It's just a, it's, a, it's this. So... That's what it is. So uh, yeah, Stu's not here. Amazing. Ask ask when Stu's so on. Yeah, I am. I can. I live inside of After Effects. So imagine that any question you have that takes place outside of After Effects is uh, is. I I don't know why. I don't know what a camera is <laughs> or what lens are, and. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab this blood texture. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to pre-comp and Here crop it, it down a bit. It here. So here's, by the way, fun fact about Spy vs. Guy. Uh, this, uh, these paintings on the front of these uh, car windshields. Um, well, first off, that's me selling that car to Steve Taylor, the Russian spy. Um, <laughs> right here, this, this right here is this like hand drawn sale. Like, first off, we, we added all this stuff to the windshields and post quite obviously if you go frame by frame, but this one right here, and I've told this in public before, so I don't think I'll get in trouble. I was during post-production on this short was, by the way, are you teaching something? Did I just interrupt one of you, like you actually doing real work to tell the story? <laughs> We, nope, I'm not, uh, not at all. During post-production of this short, I directed a commercial of Bad Robot that I've talked about on the show before. And I was a baby and very nervous and scared. And so I hid in this one part of the, uh, at Bad Robot, I hid in this one part of the building where JJ never went because <laughs> I was scared. And uh, JJ came in one day and he uh starts messing with these sign paint painter brushes. Like basically what you would think JJ Abrams would come into a room and do like, like mess with like a sign paint. Yeah. Sign painter brushes. Classic he was messing JJ. with and, uh, and he is experimenting with it. And he writes uh, the word sale 
uh, in like the way you would see it on, you know, like a car lot or something or on a window at a, uh, an old diner. And, and then I, I'm like, oh, I'm going to say a funny joke around JJ and he'll think I'm funny. And so I was talking to someone else in the person. It was one of those things where you share a joke that you've said before to this person, but you're saying it to them so that someone else in the room will hear it. And that other person is JJ Abrams. I tell this, I was talking about how like one of the, a version of the Star Trek in a Darkness trailer had come out that day. And I was like, hey, you know, we should just, Josh and I were joking, we should make a, a red band version of it where it's just Josh screaming the F word over it. And because it was something we've been laughing about earlier, which now in hindsight is not that funny. And I look over and JJ has been inspired by this joke and he has turned the thing over and he has written in cursive, uh, I'll just say the F word he's written in cursive uh, with the sign painter brush. And he takes it. And then it's lunchtime, so he takes it and he throws it in the trash, and I promptly pull it out of the trash and bring it home and frame it, and I have it in my office. Um, it's reversible, so one side it says sale, one side it says the F word, drawn by J.J. Abrams himself. And right here on the windshield uh, is the word sale, and I believe on one of these other cars is the F word. Um it goes so fast you can't see. I actually think it's this little blurb right here on the corner of the windshield. That's the F word part of it. Um, again, you can't see it, but that's art by J.J. Abrams and Spy vs. Guy. And then here's the <laughs> trunk of the Buick that we spent a lot of money on. It's a very expensive trunk. And then here's the shot. Here's the uh, Buick that Rabinowitz. It looked just like that. Just like it. Just real and more expensive. And there's the really awesome explosion he and David Coulter did. That's that. That was your That's spy phenomenal. versus guy Gresham. Spy spy Gresham for the day. Look at that blood. Uh, blood. Yeah, I'm, I'm adding some uh, blood down <laughs> so here. So disturbing. I'm, I, it In is very disturbing. Way. I want it to be subtle enough that is it just right at the beginning of the shot? Because I think the with the handle that we start kind of right as he steps <laughs> in and we kind of pan up. So I want it to be a bit a bit Easter eggy that there's the <laughs> under the cabinet is this. It's uh, good because it's just coming grossness. right out of the shadows. It's like just yeah, look peeking at that. out of the shadow there. <laughs> just enough. Like it could be a dirty floor. <laughs> it, it is could a dirty floor, that. technically. Uh, hey, hey, Michael, are, are we getting uh, any... Uh, Michael hand, might be out at the picks. moment. I believe he had to take the dog out for a second. Oh, he's back. I have re- I have returned. The, the dog's uh, business has been completed. And we have a hand from Chris Hewer. And Chris we have Hewer. A, hand, a couple of hand choices from Jason how, Murphy. Ooh. How many hands does Jason get Murphy these have? Downloaded. Well, at least two. Yeah, it's, so how did he hold the camera? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a mystery. So I'm going to make a whole little uh, folder for hand picks here real quick, and I will send I will send them all to <laughs> Celebrity hand picks? You. This is so fun. Oh, that's I love that. It's a little bit of this. A little bit of that. Amazing. Let me see. I'm a also going to... In my life. You don't always have to admit. Never Michael. ages. You can you it's... can sometimes say those things just to yourself. Just kidding. Never change. All right, I'm gonna see if I can find some uh, fun. Uh, I I'm sure I have tons of distressed uh, images and textures, but I just uh, I'm lazy, yeah, so I, I always know. go and I, search a smart for person would keep a database of textures. I am not a smart person. Mm-hmm. Let's see what I want. I just want some kind of a. Uh... Let's see if I just look up a, a crack. I just want a, a. I want to liven up that area with just a little bit of something. Yeah, that's pretty good. I just wanted to look a little bit like the door had a bit of trouble closing, but our slack just, just became forced. a hand slack. 
A hand pick slack. Shut. <laughs> Oh I love how I love okay. it. They're not just hands; they're got, limp oh my hands. God, we just have tons of. Sh- <laughs> that, that's the. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, God! I like. Wow. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull some of these up. So we have from Chris Hewer hey, a nice smart doing it right in front of a neutral hand, background. Thank a you. Very keyable situation. Lovely. And then also look at this. Jason Murphy <laughs> in situ found a a yeah. the proper like low to the ground sticking out of a cabinet lighting area. Okay. Wow. Gosh. And I really How like How much both. do you like I... them? Talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> oh. And this one even had a, a little like armband to, to uh Easter egg from your uh Oh yeah. <laughs> like two shot. watches. All right. Oh man. All right. Well, okay. at least you can now both say that you've had a tweet liked by Red Giant. So, you know, you've made it there in this world, Jason and Chris. You know what? I'm Yeah, I I, I I don't know what to do. I, I think that I'm Jason, I'm going to grab your hand for this. Take his hand. And Chris, I w- I'm going to I'm going to credit you as uh, as a, as a stand-in. I like the hand that is facing palm forward because it's the worst situation I can imagine. The body had to end up in for it to be hanging out of the cabinet. What are you looking forward. at on your screen, though, Hush? Let's see. Oh, oh, we're still looking at uh, there we go. Un, un, an unfinished uh, search. Yeah, so we're going to use... Uh, you know, it's dangerous to search for crack was, on well, the internet. Well, that's not images. the first time Hashi has uh, <laughs> accidentally... I, I, I'm notorious for just, for, for just trying things. In search, in search engines. Let's see. So let me go ahead and... Yes. Love, 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 love. Let's see. Why? The chat just... says they like the idea of a hand with a wedding oh. ring. It, it gives some more backstory. It's writing outside. You guys have to oh. make it dark, didn't you? Well, it reminds me of a very famous internet image, also involving a crack and a wedding ring, from the early days of the internet, that I'm not going to say on air. But those who know, know. And famously, uh, a, a hand, all you can see is a hand and a couple of hands and so, something, something else. And one of the hands has a wedding ring. When you notice that it has a wedding ring, it makes the whole image just that much more questionable. Hmm. I don't. Right. I am unaware, I'm, too. I'm, so I'm, it, unaware. I'm thinking of really uncomfortable things. So we're, we're going to have to hop on after this. So, yeah. Oh, it's our... worse than you're thinking. Oh, good. It's worse than you're thinking. So uh, here, uh, here I'm going to open up some uh, Photoshop where I uh, was just working wait, wait, on no, our no, thumbnail. Hashi, why would you open that a thumbnail lot of love and in care. Photoshop? Because it's, it's just like that's just a photograph you and I took, like of ourselves in front of a city one day. This yeah, is practical, very realistic and practical. It's an inside joke. Someone commented earlier, and we read it. All right. Let's see. Let's see how clever the Photoshop select subject is. Look at that. Hey, look at that. Oh, you know what I love? You should try it with the arm too. Uh, uh, content to wear scale. Have you played with it? Oh my gosh! It is it is delightful. Do it to the arm. To do it to the hand. To do what? All right. All right. Let's let's do that. Finish this uh, painting. A little selection here. This is going to be scaled down so much we're barely gonna i've gotten to where i do this work this you're doing right there i do in select detail. select mask or whatever uh right clicking that's my uh mm-hmm. my all right so let's see what happens uh to i think this would actually work this shot might work if you just hit the select he subject did. button and photoshop it, automatically did. picks the subject 
I did. Like, you did good. So Look at that. Boom. But right now, but now we're going to <laughs> to try uh, using content aware. Two things I want to see uh, is stretching the arm, but uh, also widening the hand to see if it adds fingers. Ooh, I like that. Wait, where, wait what do you do? It's I thought it was under transform. I don't remember where it is. I thought you would say edit and then transform content aware skill scale, but why don't I see? Oh, is it not selected? Ah, it wasn't selected. Content aware scale. All right. So this is a great uh, tool for like if this this is you know a portrait photo, but you wanted it to be a square photo, but you didn't want to lose any content. You could try. Whoa, doing it's adjusting the like, background too. Scaling this down. Oh my gosh. So look at that. So what it's done is it's tried to maintain that the hand was there, but it sort of compressed parts of the background, but left the hand intact. But as you start to get to these, like a little bit beyond what should happen, <laughs> you start to get very, very uncomfortable situations for the hand. Uh, like, so I didn't realize this. I've never, I didn't do it to an entire oh, image so before. Rude. I did it. I like, Oh my oh, gosh! I so cut sorry, out Jason. the hand, like I cut out the object and then scaled that object. So I'd be curious to know if you just scaled just the hand, what it would do. Uh, oh yeah. So if we were doing that, let's see. So let's transform this. Uh, oops, I gotta select the layer. Once again, I'm outside of After Effects, so things are going wonky. Content to where scale. So if I Wow. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. <laughs> what did that just make? Wow. It, well, it's it like, a, like a it's foot a foot hand, hand, but it's also like a weird little creature with a satchel on. Yeah, it's like it's got a little bandolier <laughs> and it's headed bandolier. out into Anyway. Uh, easily entertained. Uh, and <laughs> Did you just you say chandelier? Pretend I did, what because is... that's pretty damn good. Oh, man. Well, Jason Murphy, thank you so much for oh. lending us a... I'm not going to say it. Um, I... But, uh, folks, I really enjoy you sticking with us through what is arguably very boring work. But did you finish anything on your end? But the story of us attempting to do a... <laughs> No, of course not. I, I, I threw some act, like action VFX is the only one who accomplished anything uh, during the course I, of this, finished, which was uh, the I finished five somewhere shots, on dude. one of these windows. This is this is how Seth and I work together. I I, I over promise <laughs> and under deliver. Well, nope. Seth, I fiddle or, I, and I fiddle and take and take the long the way around with things. Uh, it's two o'clock. Thank you so much for VFXing and chilling with us this week. If you have suggestions for things that you would like us to try on the show, please tweet at us at Red Giant News with the hashtag VFX and chill. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, while you're here on YouTube, look up yes. the Maxon training team. They have a lot of really wonderful videos that are competent people using Cinema 4D and doing wonderful stuff uh, with with just a slew of content. It's, it's absolutely, it's unstoppable. And speaking of unstoppable. And for, and someone was asking about color grading tutorials, uh, oh, recently on gosh. the Maxon training team, uh, put on a couple of different webinars, including hands on hands on uh, getting started with color grading, which is great. If you've not really professionally learned how to do it before. And then a more in depth series, uh, both came out fairly recently. And I believe replays of both of those are on the Maxon training team, YouTube channel, whose Boom. link is in the chat. And we just glazed Ooh. over you saying hands on tutorial, uh, for this, this episode. Listen, this was such a great time, you guys. And please come back next week. We're going to have our friend, I believe next week, our friend Zach Dixon from Ivy Studio is going to be hanging out with us and uh, talking about, who knows, maybe he'll open up Unity. Maybe he won't. He does a lot of cool things. And uh, you know where to find us. I'm Awakeland3D at Twitter. Hashi is the Action Movie Kid or Action Movie Kids or one variation of that. Or Action Movie Dad. I don't even know anymore, man. What are you? I don't know. I should make a, 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 a title screen. On Twitter. 
Yeah. Find me, bug me, ask questions. I'll respond. <laughs> well, I got nothing. To and do. Michael, he's, he's there too. I'm going to make a screen for the show that has all of our handles on it. Listen, uh, this is. I still have yet to write an official outro for this show. Does it? Can you tell? 